Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we've got a good friend Sam Robson back on because we have some more Japanese talents to speak about. They've been confirmed now, Sam, which is the good news. Last time we were just talking hypothetically about Rio Hatate. This time though, we can speak about Dason Maida and it's all official. We, we don't need to worry about saying anything daft. No, that's good. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I might say something daft, but yeah, it's great that it's finally gone through. It looks like Celtic have got this done very early, which is uh, good to see. And yeah, really exciting for Japanese football and hopefully for Celtic. Indeed, right. It's a it's a six month loan deal originally for for Maida. There is a quote compulsory purchase clause afterwards, um, so Celtic will have to sign Maida permanently. It seems. Um, is there any idea for, for the reasoning here with it being a loan deal at first? Is that something that's quite common in Japanese football? Yeah, it's quite regular. I mean, initially we thought it was just kind of an option. So it was like, OK, yeah. if it doesn't work out at Celtic, that at least Marinos can keep Maida when he comes back and don't get beat to him probably by Vissel Kobe. We would probably outbid them for him. But yeah, it looks like it's compulsory. It might just be something on Celtic's end where they want to push that 1.7 million or whatever it is. Uh, to next year's budget, maybe free up some money for, I don't know, maybe a purchase of a Portuguese winger or something like that. So, but yeah, it's, it's very common in Japan, so I wouldn't really look too much into it. Right, that's interesting. Um, I think there was, a, there was a player a few years ago that, that Ange sold at, at Marinos, you'll be able mm. to tell me his name, to uh, Union Berlin. Yeah, Kater Endo. Yeah, and that, that was a kind of loan deal that, that turned permanent afterwards, yeah. so, so it is just quite common. Yeah, it just it seems that way uh, for whatever reason. Usually, I think it is just to give a bit of security to uh, the Japanese team. But yeah, this one's slightly different in that it's compulsory. But I don't think uh, Andrew will have too many concerns about bringing Maida over. He knows all about him. Yeah, joint top scorer last year, um, or the season just passed in, in the J1 League, 23 goals in 36 matches. I was watching his compilation. He, he seems to score all kinds of goals as well. Um, poaching goals, headers, scores quite a lot of headers, lobs, screamers. Uh, is there anything this guy can't do? Um, not really, not really, at least not in Japan. I mean, we'll find out, I suppose, when he goes to Scotland. Obviously, the physicality, as we all know, is uh, something a little bit different. But Maida has been used to that, I suppose. He played in Portugal for a little while, so he has mm. experience of different... I mean, he played in the Copper America for Japan, so he knows a bit about physicality. So, um, yeah, I think he's got a lot that Celtic will like. I mean, just... His raw pace is the thing that everyone will see and notice and his energy. I mean, I feel sorry for Scottish defences when Kyogo and Maida are on the same pitch because neither of them will stop running. Did I hear you correctly saying he played in the Copa America with Japan? Yeah, yeah, that's quite Ridiculous. normal, isn't it? Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah they, sent, yeah, they sent the Olympic squad out to compete in the Copa America and did fairly well. They got a draw with Uruguay. Wow. Um, just on Maida, when you're saying there that you know he's got the pace, I think that's the thing I'm most excited about here, the fact that we've been so reliant on Kyogo giving us goals, but also giving us you know the whole way of Ange playing. When we've not got the ball pressing from the front, when we do have the ball you know, not giving defenders a, a chance to rest at all. And I think the thing I'm most excited about this sign in particular is that we now have another option who can do that. Our other strikers at the club aren't like Kyogo at all. It seems like Maida's quite similar to Kyogo, is that a fair comparison? Uh, quite similar, I'd say, especially off the ball in terms of his work rate, his harassing of defenders. I mean, you could play them both together. I mean, he played predominantly left wing for Ange Marinos. So yeah, you could put those two together. It's a really high press. He, like, in terms of like sprinting charts, which is quite a ridiculous stat that they have in Japan, but uh, I think it was like the top 20 in terms of got it here for you. game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you've got it, yeah. He definitely... Uh, tops those and the lot so yeah it's fantastic i mean yeah he won't give defenses any second to to um, rest and he'll set the tone as kyogo does for the way uh Ange wants to play yeah and you say he played off the left is that where he's best uh i found where it's where he's best it's where Ange um, played him predominantly i mean he did move um to a striker role more once Ange left under kevin Muscat and He's okay at that, especially against the high line. I mean, he's fantastic. But when it's a little bit deeper, I don't think his movement as a striker is quite as good as Kyogo's. It might be something he can adapt into. And I'm sure as a backup striker, I mean, he could do a very fine job there. But yeah, his movement is just a little bit more 
intelligent, I think, off the left. I mean, the way you'll see from goals compilations, the amount of goals he gets as tap-ins, as cutbacks from the right winger. I mean, yeah, he's really good. That little burst of pace into the area, I think, is what he's best at. But, yeah, I mean, he can play in any of those three um, across the front. And that's a key part of the, the kind of Ange way of playing is, is that when your left winger or your right winger's on the ball, the opposite winger is getting in. He's not just standing yeah. 50 yards away watching. Yeah, absolutely. And that's essentially how Marinos scored uh, the vast majority of their goals is one winger gets the byline, cuts it back, and the other winger taps it in. So, yeah, I'm sure he could link up well with a Jota or a Nabado or whoever it might be. He's just yeah, so intelligent at those late runs in past the defenders, gets himself into space. Yeah, and that's where he will get the majority of his goals. But as you said earlier, yeah, he's capable of all sorts of goals. Is he a good dribbler? No. I think he's better off the ball and he's moving off the ball. I wouldn't necessarily have him as a player to pick up the ball and then take it a yeah. long way. I don't think he beats players necessarily with his technical ability or anything like that. It's more his intelligence and movement off the ball rather than... And behind. Rely- yeah, rather than relying on him as the kind of creator. Right, interesting. Um, you say he's quite similar to Kyogo, or he certainly shares some characteristics. Where is he different to Kyogo other than the movement? Where is he different? Well, yeah, that's raw energy. So I think he's quicker than Kyogo. I think that's the more, in terms of, like a, of a break of play, like if you're sitting deep for whatever reason and on the counter-attack, Kyogo is still good at it, but I think Maida has that kind of absolute express pace that will yeah, be... I think he's stronger than Kyogo. I think he can... Uh, yeah, he'll be more in terms of the physical battle with the defenders. I think he's stronger in that element. And although Kyogo started wide and uh, in Japan, I think Maida is better in those positions. I think Kyogo has kind of struggled a little bit when moved out there for Celtic. Mm. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I think Maida just has a little bit more about him to um, provide from those, well, to, yeah, kind of create chances or at least be more dangerous from those wider areas. Kyogo is... He's just not the same player but when he's out wide. I think you just lose what makes Kyogo so amazing, which is yeah. the pressing from the front and the runs in behind. He's just you feel as if he's always, you know, playing behind the game when he's uh, you know out wide. So it's interesting that, that already, you know, you you seem to think that, that Maida, you know, is, is more of a winger. Because I just had it in my head that he would be the you know, almost like the backup to Kyogo. So it's, it's interesting that, that that's the case. I mean, what was the relationship like with Ange at at Marinos, did the two of them kind of work really well? Oh, yeah. Well, he came in on loan um, in the middle of the 2020 season. Well, I say middle. It was kind of the start still in Japan because of mm. uh, COVID. So that season, I think you probably spoke about it when Andrew was there brought in. That was a horrible season for Marinos in terms of the amount of fixtures they had to play. They had been so many competitions. Everything was truncated. So he came in, he played various different positions, and it was just kind of filling in gaps for him and wherever it was needed. But... They, they developed into the start of this season, the 2021 season, uh, playing off the left wing. They kind of developed the game. So it was kind of reliant on Maida as the main goal scorer. They worked it towards him. And yeah, I mean, the goals return he had um, un- under Ange this season was fantastic. And he's carried that on um, under the new manager. So yeah, they worked really well together. You can see occasionally when Ange brings in a new player, it might take a little bit of time mm-hmm. to adapt to the way that Ange wants to play. But yeah, Maida had all the ability to get into that system. Yeah, and it flourished at the start of uh, 2021. And it's going to take him no time at all, really, uh, uh, you know, other than the, the travelling and the normal acclimatisation to, to Scottish football. Fair enough. In terms of coming in and playing under Ange's system, that's not going to be a problem at all for him. No, it shouldn't be. It's just a plug-in system. Yeah, he knows what, exactly what um, Andrew would want in either role, if it's the left wing or if it's the striker. He has played both under and So, yeah, I don't see any problem. Maybe a bit of communication, you might say, with um, other teammates. But, yeah, get Kyogo in there. Maybe Hatata as well. I mean, mm. yeah, get all three in. Yeah, it could click them straight away. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say of the three that Celtic have brought in, I'd expect Maida to have the biggest immediate impact. Right. I mean, it's interesting what you say there. It's almost like the easy thing for, for us English speakers to, to do is to assume, you know, straight away you put Maida and Kyogo together and, and they just work amazing because they're they're both, you know, they both speak the same language. But it does seem as if, like, it does seem as if that will be a, a massive advantage, the, the fact that, that Kyogo now has at least one, well, sorry, not at least one, he has at least three uh, Japanese-speaking teammates who 
are going to be on his wavelength as well. They're going to know the runs he makes. Yeah, it absolutely helps. And I think just the, in, even without them being Japanese, the games, that the way they both play complement each other so well, mm. Maida and uh, Kyogo especially, and Tatate in behind is used to looking for the sort of runs that Maida and Kyogo make with the way he plays at Kawasaki. So I think those three especially just... It seems as if it should really work from the from the from the get go. Fascinating, mate. Um, couple of caps for Japan. He's had should probably be more. Um, does, does it just say a lot about the the attacking talent that that Japan have? Or are you going to slag off the manager again? Probably, yeah. But <laughs> you will just, well, just assume I've slagged the manager off because that's what is usually the case. Yeah, he got those two caps, and those were the Copper America caps where he was playing as an Olympic player, really. Mm. Uh, so he hasn't, I kind of discount those as actual caps, really. He hasn't, he was in the last squad, but didn't actually get on the pitch. And yeah, there are a lot of attacking players in his position. I think he shares, especially if it's that left wing berth with Mitomo, who I think is uh, the best uh, current Japanese, youth, uh, young Japanese talent. I mean, he's at Brighton, sort of, well, he's still at Bel in Belgium. But yeah, so it's a difficult one to get in there, especially with Kyogo playing there and uh, Junior Ito is doing well in uh, Belgium as well. So there's a lot of players in that sort of position. Plus, Moriasu has his favourites. He's a little bit more conservative of a manager than Ange would be. So, yeah, he hasn't quite give, been given the opportunity yet. But hopefully this move um, kind of brings him to a little bit more prominence. And hopefully he should get a few more caps um, coming up in the next year. And just to touch on what we spoke about last time in regards to Japan calling... Uh, this kind of J League living up for for their yeah. first match against Uzbekistan. I believe uh, both Hatati and and Maida were were included in that squad. I don't think uh, Idiguchi was. No, Idiguchi is not there. But Hatate and Maida were. But they'll now be withdrawn yeah. from that Uzbekistan squad, and they'll call up others. And it remains to be seen. I think it's probably a couple of weeks away before they'll name the squad for the World Cup qualifiers. They're both kind of on the fringes, so. You, they might be called it, they might not. I can't guarantee anything at the moment. But, yeah, you're definitely free from the Uzbekistan friendly. Brilliant. Uh, is there an update on on that whole situation with the, the, the following qualifiers with regards to, you know, even Kyogo as well? Do, do you think he's... Are Japan going to try and, and name the best squad they can or, or is COVID, you know, going to mean that they can only call up Japanese-based players? No, they'll name the, the strongest side of their... The, couple of games out from World Cup qualifying they're in a yeah, little no. bit of a precarious position I yeah I can't say that they're going to name a Japanese the J League squad they're going to have to name the best squad available and whether the, I'm sure they'll get them into Japan and it'll be worked out even if they can't get them into Japan they'd go down the route of playing in a neutral venue to make sure that they have yeah. their best squad available you can't risk playing a weekend side with World Cup qualification on the line 23 goals in 36 league games last season hasn't really, this is my negative part of the video, he hasn't really scored too many in other seasons. I think he had one season and maybe in the second tier when he scored double figures. Is there any danger that last season was a fluke for Maida? It was definitely a breakout year. Whether I can call it a fluke or not, I'm not really sure. Previously to Marinos, he was playing at uh, Matsumoto Yamaga. So, yeah, scored goals in um, J2, but they were a very defensive team when they came up into J1. Uh, Maida was up front on his own, tasked with uh, you know, kind of scoring goals on his own. Um, his finishing wasn't great, I have to admit, and that was always an issue I had with Maida. I mean, his pace is fantastic, but when he got in front of goal, yeah, he would uh, be a little bit uh, wasteful. Mm. But he went, got that move to Portugal, and I think that kind of helped him. He didn't necessarily score a ton of goals, but to kind of experience that and to play at a higher level against a um, more difficult opposition. I think that really helped him. So when he came back to F Marinos, again, that truncated season, it's not necessarily easy to kind of say, oh, we should have really hit the ground running in that season. But mm. he definitely seemed to improve in that uh, next season. I think working with Ange helped. And his finishing was, you can't be top scorer without being a decent finisher. So he's definitely built on that. And I'd say, yeah, just he's definitely improved to the extent where I wouldn't have too many concerns about his finishing going forward. I think it's just been a natural progression for him rather than maybe a one-season wonder. So he just reached a point where everything he started, you know, hitting was going in the back of the net? Yeah, he de definitely. Well, I, wouldn't, not, I couldn't go that far because Marinos had to create so many chances. So there were quite a few that he was missing. But in a kind of a similar vein to Kyogo where 
he got to a point where he wasn't letting missed chances affect him. He would keep going and he'd, he'd score the next one. So, yeah, his finishing has definitely improved. He's not one... He used to be one who came in miss a chance, head might go down and then that would be it. But that's kind of gone from his game now. So, yeah, he's a lot more ruthless and hopeful. I hope that last season wasn't a one-season uh, wonder. But, yeah, I think he should be fine. I think he's just improved. When Kyogo came in, he made such an impact. As you'll know, he scored all those goals, a hat-trick, I think, in, in one of his first games. Do you think Maida could have a similar kind of, of impact when he when he first joined? I would hope so. It'd be so it's uh, such a difficult player to first get to grips with as a defender, with the movement that he will do, and it will be slightly different to the way Kyogo moves, especially if you've got both of them on the pitch. I just don't see how defences are going to be able to uh, contain both of them. So... It might they might be so focused on Kyogo they leave space for Maida without really knowing too much about him and I think he could catch defenses cold but it depends how that Ange wants to um, set up because Jota's still a very good player he might start Jota and Kyogo and then maybe bring Maida on against tiring defenses which again is another very good option so yeah I think yeah first six months I think uh, especially Maida will catch a lot of uh, Scottish defenses cold. Exciting. I think you're excited too, aren't you? Oh, oh definitely. With Yeah, Maida's, Maida, just Maida and Kyogo just together. It's something I've wanted to watch uh, for, for a long time. So, yeah, I'm sure that'll be really exciting for Celtic supporters. It's like a kind of J-League super team that we're, we're building. And, uh, yeah. and Andrew will know these players as well and he'll know yeah. what, what makes you know the best out of them. So, exciting stuff. Um, anything else you want to say about Maida? Get off your chest. Any major predictions? He's going, to, he's going to lead us to the Champions League next year. I can't, I can't go that far. I mean, I think he'll have a very good uh, second half of this season. I, I don't want to necessarily put too much pressure on him. I don't think he's necessarily going to start every game, but I just think he's going to be so dangerous if coming off the bench um, for the last 20 minutes. I expect him to get, oh, let's say at least five goals in the second half of the season, maybe pushing that's, 10. That's, that's conservative, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm conservative, I'm conservative. <laughs> but I just, I really expect him to push on, especially next season once the, it's all clicking together and once Andrew's got the exact team he wants around him, I think he'll be a terrific player. Excellent, Sam. We'll, we'll leave that um, there for today. We, we are going to chat to you again about Aida Gucci in, in the coming days. Um, people can find you on Twitter at FR Soccer Sam, and you, you certainly know your stuff. So thanks very much again. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me.